If you're someone who's been finally want to understand AI agents, but you're getting lost in all the technical terms and you're getting way too overwhelmed, well, this video is for you because I'm gonna be breaking down the fundamentals of AI agents as if I'm teaching it to a five-year-old so you finally understand what this whole hype is about. And in case we haven't met, my name is Michele and over the past 12 months, I've helped over 40 businesses implement AI and automations and taught over 17,000 people in the process, all starting with zero technical knowledge. With that being said, let's dive in. All right, so we're going to cover the fundamentals of AI agents and the different types of AI agents. And by the way, if you wanna see the difference between AI agents and workflows, check out this video up here. Um, but this is the simplistic version of what an AI agent does. We have an input and we have an output. Between the input and the output, there's an agent, there's someone who is prompted with instructions. So he has instructions saying, hey, you have to do X, Y, Z if this happens. And the AI agent, so the actual thing, the, the boss, uh, which has instructions, is connected to its brain and its brain is AI, so ChatGPT or Claude or Gemini. And it has a memory because as a normal human, you remember the previous conversations. So you have this context and then it has tools. So these are the different things that it uses to take action on something. So in this case, let's do an example. If the input is send an email, what it will do is that it will think through all the system prompt instructions that it was given saying, hey, if the user says send an email, then call, then use the tool, which is Gmail. And that's how the logic usually goes. And so if you have multiple tools, then the AI agent is able to take actions on multiple softwares, which means that it has actions. It can send emails. It could also schedule calendar events. It can get calendar events. It all depends on the different tools that you connected to the AI agent. Then now it's able to take action. Okay. So input, send something or do something, whatever it is. Agent will think through what it needs to do with its brain, which is ChatGPT or Claude or whatever it is. It remembers the conversation. And then it takes action on what we told it to do based on the tool that is connected to. And then it will give us the output, which is, yeah, everything was good. You're good to go. And the beautiful thing about this is that one AI agent can be connected to five to 10 different tools. So one input can lead in a series of outputs. It can lead to multiple actions in multiple softwares. Now, what does an AI agent actually look like? We're going to use N10 as an example, just because it is the, the widely known AI agent uh, feature. But the way that it looks like is we have a chat, which is the input. So this is a thing that goes into the AI agent. In this case, you can chat to it using the native N10 chat node, which looks like this. You can say hello, right? Um, you can also use Telegram. Telegram is sort of like a, like a WhatsApp. You can use Gmail, so it can send conversations to the AI agent using email. And now the information will pass through all the way to the AI agent. So this line means that it, the information goes through to here. Now, this is where the agent is prompted. So if I go in here, this AI agent is consisted of three different things. The first one is the source for prompt. So prompt is basically saying, hey, what is the thing that we're actually giving the AI agent for it to do, right? What is, what is the thing? What is the input? What is the chat? What is the email? And so we connect this. So we say connected chat trigger node because currently the AI agent is connected to the chat trigger node. This is what it's called. And then the prompt user message, which is what is the thing that's going inside? In this case, it would be the JSON uh, chat input because this is the thing that's going through here. Let me show you an example. Let me disconnect these. There we go. Let me go here. Let me say hello. And now the information will pass through to here. Now it gives us an error because this AI agent must be connected to an AI in order to think through, but you can now see that the chat input, which is this one, is hello, is the input that we give it. Now, the second thing here is the system message. So the system message is the instructions that we give it. So sort of like you have an employee and you tell the employee, hey, if this happens, call this. If that happens, call this. You're training them on what they're meant to do. Now, usually when it comes to the prompts or the, the instructions that we give to the AI agent, it consists of an overview. So saying you are a helpful, intelligent XYZ assistant that does XYZ. And then the tools. Now the tools, you basically explain the different softwares that are connected to the AI agent. So it has context as to what it can do, what tool it can do, what software it can, uh, it can take action on based on the ones that are connected to it. And then we have rules, which are different rules. So it can be when a task requires using one or more tools, make sure to identify which tool is the most appropriate, pass along the relevant details and execute the actions needed to complete the task. So these are different rules that we tell the AI agent to make sure that the quality of output is increasing. Because sometimes with the fact that it's AI, it can hallucinate, it can make up some stuff, it can do its own thing. And we basically want to restrict it to doing only the things that we want it to do. So again, we have overview, tools, and rules. 
And then we also give it the date and time because let's say we tell it, hey, can you tell John that we have a meeting tomorrow? Well, the thing about AI is that it's not the best at remembering dates. So we always want to give it a date, which in this case, you can simply do by putting curly bracket and then put now. Right, so now we'll give it today's date. And then we format it in a way where it looks like this, right? which is good. And now the AI agent will always have a dynamic variable. So it will always have this, which changes every single day based on what day it is. And it uses that as context when taking the action that it needs to take. Now, obviously this is not used always, but when it makes a calendar event, when it sends an email asking for a specific time, uh, this is very, very useful. So again, we have the chat input and then we have the system prompt, which is the instructions that we give to the AI agent when it needs to take action on something. Then we have the LLM plus memory. The chat model here is the brain of the AI agent. Now I can connect this to the model, right? So this is the, um, the line that allows the AI agent to then pass through the input to its brain using its instructions and then actually think. And in order for us to actually connect the AI agent to OpenAI, all we have to do is go here, create a new credential, and you wanna go to platform.openai.com, log in, you can go to dashboard, you can go to API keys, and we're basically making a password that any 10 AI agents can use when actually thinking through its LLM. LLM just means ChatGPT or Claude, uh, in actually thinking through the instructions. So you can press this button, you can say AI agent, create a secret key, and make sure to copy this, which will then paste right here. And you can call this AI agent test 3rd October. Press save. And bear in mind that this is not free. So you would have to go to your profile and you would have to go to billing uh, right here and make sure to add some money because AI requires you to have credits and credits require money. Uh, but it is very, very cheap when we're talking about a few, few cents per execution. All right, so now that we connected AI, we have ChatGPT as the brain. All we have to do now is connect the model, right? So we're choosing the model that the AI agent uses when it's thinking through what it needs to do. So now that we have AI connected to it, let's actually chat to it. Let's say, hello. And now what you can see is that the input went here. What it did is that it automatically talked to its brain, which is, in this case, it's OpenAI, and then it gave us an answer. So the answer in this case is, hello, how can I assist you? And this is as if we're talking to the actual ChatGPT interface on ChatGPT, but we're connecting it using the API version. So the automatic version. Now we have memory. Now memory right here is when the AI agent, when you want the AI agent to remember previous steps or conversations uh, when you're doing something. So this is useful when you're basically creating a draft and email to John, and then um, the AI agent already knows who John is. And then you say, can you also schedule a calendar event? So now it has context as to who John is to then be able to take the next action without you having to state who John is in the first place. But on a simple term, I can say, hello, how are you? And now I can also ask it, what did I just ask you? If I ask this, I can now get the answer, which is probably, hello, how are you? Uh, you asked me, hello, how are you? How can I assist you today? Now, as you can see here, the logs, these are the different steps that the AI agent took in order to get to the output, right? So in this case, what it did is that the AI agent went to the simple memory. So it remembered uh, exactly the conversation that it had using the context. Then it uses AI to think through its uh, instructions. And then what it did is that it used the memory tool again to give us the actual answer. All right, so now that we have the LLM connected to this and the memory, this tool right here, so this is how the AI agent actually takes action. And we can connect this to Gmail and Calendar. And inside the Gmail, we set a series of instructions and different details to allow the AI to define what the subject line is, what the message is, and who are we sending the email to. And same thing with the calendar. This is going to be another tool that the AI agent has access to in order to take actions for us. And we give it the before and after uh, of the event that we want to schedule, uh, or in this case, we want to get the event. Um, and now if I speak to the AI agent, this is prompted, if I go here, this is prompted with the two different tools. So Gmail will be used to draft an email. Uh, calendar will be used to get calendar events, right? So it knows exactly when to use each tool. And when I say, hey, can you send an email? This should now send back, or should ask me, who are we sending the email to? So if I say, hey, I can help you draft an email. Can you provide me with the details of the email, such as the recipient email address, the subject line, and the message you'd like to include? So I said, send an email to michele.torti uh, at gmail.com, saying we have dinner tomorrow. What this will now do is that it will take action on the draft. As you can see, it just called the tool. 
So I just send a signal to the tool saying, hey, I just got received instructions to do X, Y, Z. Can you do it? As you can see, we haven't through step by step right here. And now it says we have drafted the email to Michele. So if I go to my email right here, I can see in the drafts that we have dinner tomorrow to this person right here. Obviously you can improve the prompt to make the email actually more contextual or uh, I guess more sauce in the email, but just know that it called the exact tool that we wanted to call to take the action that we wanted to take, right? Without us having to go to the Gmail tool. And it did it within seconds. Now for my calendar, let's do an event um, lunch and let's do dinner, right? We have one on Friday and one on Sunday. If I go to any 10, let me ask it, can you grab the events from this week, please? What this will now do is it will go here, it will think through what it needs to do. It will then call the appropriate tool to then give us an answer back, which should give us lunch and dinner. Um, as you can see here, we have Q&A with Shaz, which is something that I did before, lunch and dinner as well, because these were the three events. We have Q&A with Shaz, lunch and dinner. And that's how fundamentally a simple version of an AI agent looks like. It's connected to an input, it thinks through its LLM, because uh, that's how it, its brain works. It, it remembers the conversations, and it takes action on the, the things that we wanted to do using different softwares. Now, this is called a simple AI agent. Now we can get onto the multi-step AI agent. So this is an AI agent that is connected to more AI agents and more tools, right? As you can see, it's more complex than just a simple walkthrough. And by the way, if you wanna see the full walkthrough of this AI agent, check out this video up here. But essentially the way that this works is that we have an input and we have an output. This is always the case with AI agents, it doesn't change. Now, the only difference here is that we still have the system prompt instruction. This is still the exact same. It still has a brain, which is LLM. It still has a memory. But the only um, change is that we're not calling tools as a first step, we're calling other agents in the first step. So fundamentally, this is why. Because the most important thing here that matters, it's not so much the tools, it's the prompt that we give the AI agents because the prompt is the instructions. And so if we instruct an AI agent to take action on 55 different tools like these, well, the chances that it would actually succeed are pretty low, even though we have the best prompt in the world because of the fact that um, it be non-deterministic, right? It can fail, right? Because it's AI. And so what we do here is we want to minimize the failure rate of an AI agent. So what we do is we add more AI agents. And so the way to think about this use case is as if you have a company. So a company, right, will be the customer, which is the input. It then tells the, the CEO, hey, can you, can you maybe check the finances that we have in our company? And now the CEO is presented with head of departments. So in this case, we have the head of calendar, head of email, head of blogs, and head of contacts. And the head of contacts and blog and email and calendar have access to tools, which are employees, right? And so why do we have head of departments and not just have employees connected to the CEO? Because if the CEO had access to a hundred employees and he was given a task from his client, it would be hard for him to know exactly who to assign it to. He would get it wrong most of the time or some of the time. And so when we want to minimize errors, we want to assign a head of department for that specific role and let him figure out who to give it only for the employees in his department, right? So the tools are only connected to the calendar agent for the calendar tools. Same thing with emails, blogs, and, and contact as well. And so what ends up happening here is that we have a big AI agent and all of these are subsect of this. So this is one, which is the same thing as this. This is one, which is the same thing as this, this, and this as well. The only difference is that the memory is only connected to the main AI agent. And so here we have Telegram, which is the input. So we can give it a voice message or even a text. All right, so here we have Telegram, which is the input. And we have the whole AI agent. And let's say now I wanted to uh, send an email and schedule a calendar event. As you can see, we also have the contact agent, which in this case, we instruct the main agent to always look at the contact agent before sending the email and before making the calendar event, because this contains the detail of the person that we're doing all this for. And as you can see here, the contact database consists of Michael James, John Lowry, and James Lowe. So we can first run this. So now it's waiting for the messages to come through. And now with Telegram, we can say, send an email to Michael James, uh, telling him that we have dinner tomorrow at 5 p.m. And can you also put that on the calendar and invite him as well? Um, yeah, that's it. All right, so now we give it an input. Let's press enter. What this will now do is it will then go to the AI agent. It will then talk to the contact agent because we instructed it to use the contact agent first before doing anything else. And now it will take action on the email. As you can see, it used this tool, which is send the email. And then it sent it to the calendar agent at the same time to create an event. Now, if I go to my email right here, I can see that I have dinner tomorrow. We have dinner tomorrow at 5 p.m. And my calendar 
I can see that I should have dinner with Michael James at 4 to 5 p.m. And it also invited his email as well, which is nuts. So why is this any different from the previous one? Well, this is a very, very simplistic version of an AI agent. Whilst this is more advanced, it has more features, and it breaks down the different steps step by step, right? As I mentioned, we have the CEO and we have the head of departments and the head of departments are connected to different tools and these tools are employees, right? Instead of giving all the employees and hooking them all up to this tool, because then it will overwhelm the AI agent. It has to way too many options. The prompt will be way too big. And so we basically want to construct it or deconstruct it and break it apart for it to actually have room for thinking when it's taking the action that it needs to take. And so this is really, really powerful because just by having this one input, it can lead to what over over 10, 12 actions, right? Which is nuts, which is why AI agents are really, really powerful when you want to have something that's autonomous. That's why they say it's your virtual employee because your virtual employee in this case is connected to different tools, which are different actions, and it can do different things for you. But bear in mind that if you want the AI agent to do more things than you have right now, then you have to connect it to more tools and more softwares, right? And what I always think about when I'm building AI agents is, that we never want to overwhelm the, the AI agent, right? Because if you give it a prompt that's super, super long, it's still AI, right? Like there's no 100% fact or no 100% um, guarantee that it will always do the same thing. And which is great, which is fine when you're testing, but when you're putting it into an actual business, like the margin for error needs to be very, 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 I'm talking like 0.0001% chance it fails uh, because it's in production mode. Businesses need to actually operate. And so you don't want something that sometimes work, that most times works. You want something that pretty much all the time works. And by pretty much, I mean like 99.99% of the time works. Um, but there's still obviously that, that thing of like AI not being able to do everything, right? But it's great that we can now chat to it and it can now take action on everything that we want. So this right here is the fundamentals of AI agents. Let me show you another example of AI agents and where these can come from. I can simply go to ChatGPT and I can just search up agent mode. So agents are pretty much everywhere because a lot of these software tools, they're implementing these sort of autonomous systems where you can just say, can you go to Google and find the top five marketing agencies in Ontario, Canada? And just by this prompt right here, what it does is that it thinks through, so it thinks through the actual task, and then it takes action on the thing that we told it to do. So now it's thinking, which is the exact same with anything, as in it has a brain that it thinks through. So as you can see now, it's cross-checking, it's doing a ton of research uh, for us. And a good thing is that we can see it live what it's doing which is amazing. And one step above of this is I can actually take actions on our softwares. So this right here is obviously going to Google on its own, but we can say, hey, go to my Notion and create a task or go here and do something else. All right, as you can see here, we got the different agencies, the location, the key specialties, and the evidence as well with all the different sources and the summary as well, which is crazy. As in, we gave it a simple prompt. Can you go to Google and find the top five marketing agencies in Ontario, Canada? This is something that you give to an employee and it just did it for two minutes and it did a ton of research as well. So that's exactly why AI agents are so powerful because whether it's ChatGPT, whether it's an AI agents, whether it's relevance, whether it's lovable, whether it's Gemini Canvas, right? Like we all have different, uh, the AI agent fundamentals don't change. They don't change because they all have an input, they all have an output. And the middle part is the thing that really drives the value because it takes action on us without us having to be so explicit with the instructions or with the input that we give it. And if you want this full blueprint right here, make sure to check out the first link down below, which will take you to my free school community. You can go to the classroom section. You can go to the templates vault. You can then go to the uh, latest video right here, which will have a link to download the Anytime automation blueprint, and you can put it into your own account. And if you have no clue how to do that, no worries at all. I got you covered. I have a video right here as to how to import blueprint to Anytime and you have tons of other resources as well right here. And if you apply and you get in, you also get access to the AI Automations 101 course, which is a very, very comprehensive course, which takes a real beginner in AI automation to someone who's actually able to build automations for themselves and for other businesses. But as a disclaimer, you can see that we have about 741 pending members, so we're not letting everybody in. So please put them thoughts into your answers before you apply. I'll see you on the inside. So I hope now you understand the fundamentals of AI agents, how they work, how we set them up, and why they're so powerful. And if you want to dive deeper into NDN, then make sure to check out this video on the screen where I show you step by step how I built a customer support AI agent for an e-commerce store. With that being said, I hope you found value from this video and I'll see you in the next one.